Hi, my name is Ellen Cookman and I'm a, an estate planning attorney. And I'm going to talk today about Proposition 19. This is all about changes to California's property taxes. And as we know, in California, property taxes are really tricky and, um, and always changing. So here's, I'm sharing my screen and this is a little bit about me. So I'm an attorney. I have my JD and LLM in estate planning and I have been practicing in estate planning for about 14 years now. And I've had my own practice for seven years. And I, I love this field. I love helping clients. And I also have a child with special needs and I do specialize in special needs planning and planning for those who just haven't quite launched yet. Okay, so here's some history that you may already know, but it's a good reminder. All right, so Proposition 13 was passed by the people of California in 1978. Before 1978, California functioned just about the same as every other state does, um, where um, every year, or every two years, assessors would come out and see what's the fair market value of your house. And they would increase how much you have to pay for property taxes. They'd increase the assessed value. All right, but what Prop 13 did is it said, you can't increase the assessed value by more than about 2% per year. So your the value of your home might increase by 10%, but they can only increase the assessed value by 2%. So you have a lot of people who bought their house in the 1970s for $100,000, and now their house is worth $3 million, but they're only paying property taxes on that $100,000 and a little bit more as it's gone up just a little bit, okay? So um, so a lot less than maybe the person next door. And then the property is only reassessed when there's a change in ownership. So when the, the house is sold or it's, um, you know, the owner dies and it, it transfers to the kids or when there's new construction completed, the house is totally raised to the ground. All right, so continuing our history lesson, in 1986, Proposition 58 was passed, all right? And what this did is it said, for that transfer from a parent to a child, the property is not reassessed. So that would be for a, a residence of any size, there's no reassessment. So a child can inherit, remember we said that $100,000 house that a parent purchased went up to 3 million? and then it went to the kid, well, the kid inherits it as if they bought the house for 100,000, you know, or 200,000, whatever the, the low assessed value is. And they only have to pay property taxes on that low amount for, for residents of any size. And also for non-residents properties, when you add up the assessed value up to a million dollars, all right? So this was a really nice benefit that kids inheriting California properties could, could enjoy. There's also a proposition, uh, Prop 1, uh, 193, which uh, broadened this to grandparent to grandchild transfers when the parent had died. Okay, so if it skips over a generation, you still um, get this wonderful benefit. Now, so this was in place from 1986 to 2021. So you see where I'm going with this, right? Um, so let's go on. Okay, so next we have Propositions 60 and 90, which were also passed at the same time as Prop 58. And this will allow um, people who own houses and they're age 55 or older, so I guess they're retired, although I'm, I'm quickly reaching that age, so it doesn't seem that old to me, right? But um, they can keep, if they, if they decide to sell a house and basically downgrade to a different house, then they can keep their low property tax basis um, for one move. All right. Now, this only works or it only worked if the county where the house was sold and the new the county where um, the, the new property was purchased are both participating in this. So Prop 60 is where, um, you know, the house is sold and the house is purchased all in the same county. Prop 90 is where it's sold in one county and purchased in a different county, and only 10 counties in California opted into this. All right, but that does, in the Bay Area, that includes San Mateo, Santa Clara, and Alameda County. All right, so now we come to Proposition 19. So Prop 19 was on the ballot and it passed, um, I believe it was November of 2020, and it was enacted in February of 2021. 
So remember what I was talking about people over at age 55 and they could transfer their low uh, uh, property tax um, assessment to a new property? Well, here's what happened, okay? They actually are now giving people over uh, 55 and up three times to transfer their low property tax assessment. And it applies to every county in the state. Counties don't have to opt in, all right? So that's really nice for people who are retiring or want to downsize. And also, if they buy a house that's, that's larger, the reassessment only happens on, on the difference um, in, the, um, in, in the increase. So it's kind of a, a blended assessment, okay? So that's really good. And let me tell you, a lot of realtors really pushed for this to happen because they thought this would lead to an increase in sales. But here's the problem. It needs to be paid somehow. And I think there was, was not good um, disclosure about how this was gonna be paid for. And this is, this is what happened. Okay, so here's, sorry, before we go on to that, here's an example of, uh, of Prop 60 and Prop 90, all right? So we have a couple, um, they sell their home uh, that has an assessed value of uh, 250,000 for $1 million. And then they buy another house for uh, 1.5 million. All right, now they're only paying uh, property taxes on $750,000, even though the house is 1.5 million because they were able to take that forgiveness of the 750,000 on their prior house that they were able to pull that over to the new house. All right, so here's the bad part. The way that they're paying for that is they're restricting Prop 58, the parent-child exclusion. And here's, here's how it works. Okay, so here's the reminder. Before Prop 19, you could have a residence of any value and transfer it to your children. The children don't need to live there. They can just enjoy having the house, maybe renting it out. Um, and, and there's no reassessment. They continue to pay low property taxes. And then also for non-residences, you add up the assessed value and you can get up to a million of assessed value forgiven. And that can also go to the children and there's no reassessment after Prop 19. So February 16th, 2021, this kicked in for, for everybody in California, all right? So here's what happens. All right, you can have your residence of the, the current assessed value um, and that can go to a child who turns around and moves in to that property. So that's why I have the little icon of the person there. They actually have to reside in the residence in order to get the, uh, the, the non-reassessment. And by the way, only the first million dollars of increase in fair market value is forgiven from reassessment. All right, so, so you have um, you know, the, the house's assessed value, then the first million in increase is also forgiven, and then the child is paying uh, property taxes on anything above that. Okay, and that's for the residents. For the non-residents, sorry, Charlie, all non-residences, uh, when they pass to children, are reassessed. How do we get around that? Well, well, that's a good question. It's it's tricky, all right. If if you have a non-residence property, uh, sometimes you can put it into an LLC and then do small transfers um, of that amount. I don't actually do that work, but there are some attorneys out there who do. But it's time-consuming and it's expensive. It's really a pain. Um, then also, there's a theory out there that perhaps you can do a small transfer in ownership and then convert it to a uh, joint tenancy and that wouldn't be reassessed due to one strange law in California. I've never tried it um, and, and we don't know if that might work yet. I'm skeptical, okay? But there's a lot of attorneys who are trying to figure out a way around Prop 19, but there's, it's, it's really hard. So unfortunately, I'm providing the you know good news and the bad news, right? And from my client's perspective, this is indeed bad news um, because how do you have a kid inherit property and then all of a sudden they're paying much higher property taxes? How are they gonna stay in California in, in one of the most expensive places in the world? It's it's really cost restrictive. Okay, just a little bit about my firm, right? So there's, there's eight of us, two attorneys and six support staff and we help, uh, we have a virtual practice. So we help all over the state and we charge flat fees. Um, so, so we love helping 
different families. We encourage you to connect with us. Um, I do have a YouTube channel. Um, so it's called Ellen Cookman Special Needs Trust Attorney. So please look me up, subscribe, uh, like the videos, all of that. And then Facebook and LinkedIn, I post there quite frequently on just interesting subjects um, to the general public and, um, and also to um, financial advisors and other professionals. So I've, I've included a little a QR code. So if you click on this, you can actually receive uh, the slides from today. And if, if it doesn't work for you, I've heard, you know, people have tech issues and <laughs> I'm not one to talk. I'm not very good at tech issues. Um, you can call our firm and we will be happy to send you the slides. So now you have a better idea of how Proposition 19 works and how California property taxes have changed over time. To dig into how this might affect you and your family and how you might still be able to protect your house for the benefit of your children to be able to live there in the future, please feel free to reach out to our office and we can discuss this and whatever changes you might need to make to your estate plan to best protect your family. Thank you.